Hello everyone, welcome to my channel and welcome to another video. So today's video we are gonna be doing my makeup. And if it was only about my makeup routine, then this video would firstly be super short because I really do not use very much makeup at all. Secondly, it wouldn't be very relevant for my male viewers. So we're not just gonna be doing my makeup routine, we're also gonna get a little bit personal in this video because usually I do make videos that are very instructional, quite factual, how-to videos. But as you know, if you're somebody who suffers from a skin problem, regardless of whether it's eczema, psoriasis, acne, it's all the same. There is a huge psychological element to it and it has a huge psychological impact. So I thought today I would also talk a little bit about how I think eczema and having a skin issue has sort of impacted me, the kind of ex experiences, the thoughts that I've had, because I know that sometimes it's nice to hear that other people are going through the same thing or have gone through the same thing and to make you feel like you're not alone. So apologies if the lighting changes a little bit, the sun is being very indecisive today, so um, hopefully just you'll bear with me. And yeah, let's just get straight into it. So most of this makeup has been bought from natural, organic or sort of non-toxic makeup brands. I do like to do a bit of research before I buy anything new just because because I think it's better to wear non-toxic and natural products because firstly, it's better for your skin. Secondly, it's kind of better for your health long-term because you have to remember that the stuff you put on your skin does get absorbed. And thirdly, it's better for the environment. But yeah, let's just get straight into the actual makeup and we can start with a little chat. So I'm gonna start with my Aero Perez Oat Milk Foundation and I use this in color Chai. And what I just do, I just pop a little bit on my finger. I do have a makeup brush, but actually it is still in device. At the moment, I'm just using my fingers. So I just pop a little bit under my eyes like this and a little bit around my lips here from, I've got quite a lot of discoloration and sort of pigmentation issues from having so much eczema there for such a long time. Uh, and yes, I am a little bit sunburned at the moment because yesterday I sat in the park with my friends and I thought I had my back to the sun the whole time, but um, no, clearly I caught it. And um, now I am a little bit red. Yeah, anyway, that happened. So one of the main things I guess that I have in terms of the insecurities I've always had is my biggest problem area, which was a problem area for such a long time, which is around my lips. And I think the, this was like the, a particularly bad area for me. I, it came out when I was about 11 or 12. I was, it was my very first year at this new school and it happened over a weekend and it was, it was strange how it happened because I remember I was staying at my friend's country house and we actually watched a really scary movie that, that weekend. I do not know if that has something to do with it, if there was like some kind of stress that happened that weekend, but I do remember watching The Sixth Sense and um, I usually love scary films, but that like freaked me out, that film. And I was just using this normal chapstick that I started reacting to. I didn't really understand what was going on. It was just getting very, very itchy and my reaction was to put more and more of it on, which at the time I didn't realize was just making it 10 times worse and because of that my lips just got really 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 itchy and that was pretty much when it all kind of kicked off and I remember when I was younger I like didn't understand that it was lip eczema and I just remember so in being so incredibly embarrassed about it and I remember at school or if it was very bad I would be as quiet as I possibly could because I, I didn't want to speak firstly because speaking draws attention to your mouth basically I didn't want to draw attention to myself I was very very shy at this age and I think this a uh, 100% impacted it. And I think also there is obviously nowadays we have a huge hyper focus on appearance. And I think that I very much grew up with uh, that kind of influence around me that your appearance was so much connected to your value and whether you were good, whether people were gonna be friends with you and whether boys were gonna like you and all these sorts of things. So having eczema around was really, really tough at that age, particularly. Actually, now that I'm looking at my face, I'm gonna add a little bit more around since I'm gonna do a full face of makeup today. This is actually quite a good color for me at the moment. Sometimes in the winter, this is way too dark. Okay, so that'll be good. That's like a nice thin layer, not too much, but you know, it definitely does the job. So next we're gonna use this heavy duty concealer. So this is a concealer that I use on the areas that either if I have like a big spot at the moment or the areas that I do find are, are really quite discolored. Like I said, the corners of my lips are usually an area where I have to go over it again. And so I'll just do that here. This this shade is a little bit lighter than my actual foundation. Uh, maybe sometimes under my eyes. And then of course I've got some spots, some beautiful spots coming up here. It's looking pretty nice, you know? Another memory that I just had when I was probably between the ages of 12 and 14, maybe, 
I, when I was really, really, really desperate, I would literally pray every night before going to bed. I'd be like, please, 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 dear God, please like help me out. Like, please make my skin better. In the mornings when I woke up, it was always the first thing I thought about. Like I'd wake up in the morning, the first thing I would do is like, I'd touch my, touch my lips or I'd go like that. They were always really um, often very dry and like crackly. Like now when I do this, it just feels like completely normal, completely soft. But back then it was just always dry and always really, really crusty. And it was the first thing I did, like I'd wake up and I'd go like this and I'd be like, oh my God, is it gone today? And like, it never was. Like it was either better or worse, but it was nearly always worse. It was just so, it was so consuming. Like it was all I'd ever think about. Yeah, it was really, really sad. And I cried a lot all the time about it. Oh gosh, you're getting a bit emotional. Now I'll be fine. If you are in a place where there is a lot of focus around appearance, which is firstly very unhealthy, people shouldn't be talking or commenting about other people's appearance anyway. There's other things and better things you can be talking about, but it, it does it does make it extra worse for people who have skin problems. And it's not just eczema, it's acne as well, because I have one or two friends who had really, really bad acne and had exactly the same experience. You have something that affects your appearance. You are become so hyper self-conscious. Even now, like when I feel like I have bad skin from an eczema perspective, I become even more sensitive about people making comments about my appearance, other people's appearance. You internalize it so much more. Okay, so let's move on. So I probably wouldn't use both foundations, but since we're just going through all my makeup, then why not? So this is something I bought quite recently. It's a face oil. I really like it. It's super light. And I'm just gonna do a little bit on my finger like that. Whoop, see it drips everywhere. And then you just literally go at that and it feels really, really nice on your skin. Yeah, I like it a lot. Okay, so this is already a lot of foundation and stuff on my face. I mean, I maybe I'd wear this if I was like going on a night out, but most of the time I really don't wear this much makeup at all. Like. Um, I actually used to be one of those people who couldn't go outside without makeup, which is crazy to think now. I just think girls look so pretty without makeup, so I don't really know um, why so many of them feel like they need to cover up their face, like with a big mask all the time. Okay, so what is next here? We have got this very old and slightly embarrassing um, eyebrow colouring thing. So I do like to colour in my eyebrows just a little bit because otherwise my face looks a little bit bald. So most of the time I do get my eyebrows waxed and dyed. So I don't even need to do this step most of the time because again, I'm all about the kind of low maintenance, but still looking presentable. Obviously now none of us are going to the salons. So I'm having to DIY it, which is cool. So most of the time I would probably just go out like this. Like I really, if this, I mean, this is actually quite a lot for me already. Like normally I would literally just put a little bit under my eyes a little bit around here maybe, maybe do a bit of my eyebrows, brush my hair, and then I'd kind of just leave and be good to go. So I did mention before that I used to be one of those people who felt like they couldn't leave the house without makeup. And this wasn't necessarily to do with the fact like if I had a bad skin at that time, it's just, again, realization that I think if you have a disorder that affects your appearance, it does make you kind of hyper-focused on your own appearance. So before I would always, want to put some mascara on, I'd always want to kind of put foundation on and things like that before I went outside and showed people my face because I thought that my natural face was hideous and that I looked like a boy and I don't know what, I just didn't really like it. And then, yeah, and also I think it does help that now since I've been going out with Charlie, who tells me that he actually thinks I look better without makeup, which I'm telling you girls, that is the gold standard of boyfriend material. Other people's reactions and how, what other people tell you and the kind of belief systems that you have in your head are very much linked to the way that people treat you and the things that people say around you. If you are living with someone with eczema, it's really important that you think about those things. Okay, so what's next? So we have now got, okay, so a bit of bronzer. Just put a little bit here. This is such an old bronzer. Guerlain. Gurna terracotta, I don't know. Yeah, I just do a little bit like that. So I just look a little bit tanned and then that'll be good to go. So another thing that I remember that used to really, really get to me is when people actually do make a comment on how your skin looks or if you're having a particularly bad flare up. Skin issues are a very physically uncomfortable thing to be going through. So it's very hard to not be thinking about it. So when somebody then does come to you and say, oh, what's going on with your face? Or, oh, what's that, what's that on going on there? Like if it was just somebody who just wasn't thinking, whether it's like a, you know, somebody at school or whether it was a family member or whether there was, it was just somebody who said something, not really realizing the kind of impact that that has, but they would cut me so deep because 
you know, you try so hard to convince yourself that actually, no, it's fine. Like people aren't really noticing it. People don't really think about it as much. But then as soon as someone makes a comment, all the things that you've been trying to make yourself believe and convince yourself, you immediately know it's not true. Everyone's looking at it. It looks horrible. It looks disgusting. Like all these kind of very, very negative things that you're thinking about yourself, they become validated. At the moment, I must say like my skin is actually really quite good. It's, it's you know, I feel like since last week when I, yeah, I feel like I kind of cracked it, I guess. Like I kind of get what's happening with my skin and what makes it good and what makes it bad. If you want to see that video, I'll leave a link up here. But I do know the difference of what it feels like when your skin is bad because I did actually quite recently go through it. So the most recent time that this happened for me, I went into the office and obviously the office you're around loads of people and these aren't even necessarily your friends. They're just like people you have to see on a daily basis. So it makes you even more self-conscious when it's like you're really good friends, you can talk to them about it and you can open up about it. But as people you don't even really know, like the last thing you want to do is be around them when you're feeling really self-conscious and you don't want them to be sitting there thinking, mm, I wonder what's going on with her face, but actually we're not close enough for them to ask me and for me to be able to explain. But not that I think that anyone thinks badly of you when you have a skin issue, but it's not even necessarily what they're thinking, it's what you think that they're thinking and that is what affects you the most. Okay, so let's move on. So I bought this just a few days ago. So this is actually the first time I'm gonna be using it and it is a liquid eyeliner. Okay, I'm gonna have to use my little handheld mirror for this, so bear with me. Okay, I like it, looks pretty cool. I think the flick is a little bit uneven on this one, but that's okay, because I'm not actually going anywhere today. That's not true, I go to the park. So another thing that I remember when I was younger, I hated talking about my skin. I actually, I didn't just hate it, I like, I, I didn't do it. I didn't talk to anyone about it. I never talked about how I felt about it, how it was impacting me. I think that that made it 10 times worse. All I would do is like, I would internalize it. I would sit in my room sometimes, I'd be super moody. And my family would be like, sometimes they wouldn't understand if I was particularly snappy or if I was just in a really grumpy, bad mood that day because I would never say it. I would never say like, oh, my skin feels terrible and I feel awful today. They would just think that I was like this like moody, grumpy teenager when all, all I really needed was like to talk to someone about it. YouTube wasn't really a big thing at the time and I would sometimes go on the internet but even like the internet forums like those things didn't really exist when I was um growing up when I was a teenager not in the same way that there is now now I think if you have it there's so many support groups and things you can you can go to I would just have to go to my doctor who'd always tell me the same thing who would just say like oh you're gonna have it forever and here's some steroids. Okay, so now we're gonna do my mascara. I love this mascara, oh my goodness. I should do a video on this. It's like the Burt's Bees uh, Nourishing Mascara and 100% Natural and it comes, it says it's like dark brown, but it comes out as black. Best thing about it is that it dissolves so easily in water. You don't need to, you don't need to use like a makeup remover to wash it off. You literally just grab water uh, and it washes straight off. And it, you know, it's great. It's just like normal mascara, but I absolutely love this. While I'm doing my eye eyelashes here, I can notice that my eyelashes at the moment are very short. And that is because if I have had eye eczema recently, it does impact my eyelashes for some reason. <laughs> So yeah, so this is what my face looks like after I have a full face of makeup on. Like I said, I really don't normally wear this much makeup at all. I think that this is something that if you feel like you're one of those people who really needs to wear makeup every single day, see how it goes not wearing makeup a few days and that is probably quite a good exercise for you. But to wrap up this video, I want to say that if you are somebody who is really struggling with your skin problems and how it is affecting your mental health, please find someone to talk to about it, whether it is somebody you know or whether you feel, if you don't feel comfortable talking to someone you know about it, find a support group online, find a doctor, find just somebody who perhaps will understand and just listen. Because I think that, you know, once you start talking about it, you will feel a lot better about it. And you will realize that a lot of things that you are thinking, the things that, the very negative beliefs that you have about yourself, they are unfounded. People actually genuinely care much more about who you are as a person. And, you know, you really need to find ways to try and be your best self even when you are going through risk and problems. Yeah, I really hope that you like this video. I hope that you guys are happy and safe and well out there. And I would really appreciate it if you did give this video a thumbs up because it really helps to support my channel. And also subscribe because then we can see more of each other. See you again very soon for another video. Bye.